Hello everyone, welcome to Quotes Today by Live Law, your one-step destination for the latest and fastest legal updates. I am your host Urvashi Chahan, bringing you day-to-day -day happenings, landmark judgments, crucial rulings and expert insights into the world of law. Starting with an important judgment delivered by the Supreme Court today. A seven-judge bench of the Supreme Court in 6 is to 1 ratio has ruled that subcategories within scheduled castes to give separate quotas to those who are more disadvantaged can be created. However, the court has also stated that the state cannot reserve all the seats for any subcategory and that the state must have evidence showing that the subcategory is not adequately represented to justify the subclassification. The background of this matter relates to Section 4, Clause 5 of the Punjab Scheduled Caste and Backward Classes Reservation in Services Act of 2006. The rule says that within the percentage of job vacancies reserved for scheduled caste, 50% must be given to two specific groups within the scheduled caste category, that is to Balmikis and Mazavi 6. The validity of the rule was challenged, questioning whether it is fair and legal to give this special preference to the two groups over other SC candidates. In the year 2010, a division bench of the Punjab and Haryana High Court had struck down the provision relying on E.V. Chennaiya judgment. The E.V. Chennaiya judgment says that all the castes in the presidential order under Article 341 of the Constitution form one class of homogeneous group and the same cannot be further subdivided. So, as the order of Punjab and Haryana High Court was appealed, in that appeal, the matter was referred to a seven-judge bench by a five-judge bench in the year 2020. The bench comprising C.J. Chandrachur, Justices B.R. Gavai, Vikram Nath, Bela M. Trivedi, Pankaj Mittal, Manoj Mishra and Satish Chandra Sharma had reserved the judgment in February this year after hearing the matter for three days. Now the court has referred to historical evidence which suggested that scheduled castes are not a homogeneous class and subclassification does not violate the principle of equality enshrined under Article 14 of the Constitution that for the state to create subclasses within the scheduled castes, it must provide clear and measurable data showing that these groups are underrepresented. The state cannot make these decisions arbitrarily or for political reasons and such decisions are subject to judicial review to ensure that they are fair and legally justified. In the judgment, the court has also expressed the need to exclude the creamy layer among the scheduled castes from the reservation benefits meant for the SC categories. I must tell you that at present, the concept of creamy layer is applicable only to the reservation for other backward classes. The creamy layer refers to the wealthier and better educated members of the OBCs who are excluded from government benefits intended for the economically and socially disadvantaged within the OBC category. Four out of the six judges who supported subclassification have expressly stated that creamy layer exclusion must be applied to the SCs. Justice Bela Trivedi has dissented. She has stated that only Parliament, through a law, can change the list of scheduled castes notified by the President under Article 341 and not the states. That creating subclasses within this list would be like altering it, which goes against the purpose of Article 341, designed to keep political factors out of the SCST list. Do visit LiveLaw.in to read the judgment and let us know your views in the comment box. Next is another important ruling which has come today in the Krishna Janbhumi Shahi Idga Mosque dispute in Mathura. The Allahabad High Court today dismissed the plea of Shahi Idga Masjid Committee filed under Order 7 Rule 11 of CPC challenging the maintainability of 18 suits filed by the deity and Hindu worshippers. The controversy here relates to the Shahi Idga Mosque, which is alleged to have been built by demolishing a temple at Lord Krishna's birthplace. In 1968, a compromise agreement was brokered, which allowed the mosque and the temple to coexist. However, this agreement's validity is now being challenged in court by Hindu parties who claim that it was fraudulent and are seeking the mosque's removal to assert their right to worship at the site. 
Last year, let me tell you, the Allahabad High Court had taken over all related cases from the Mathura Court in this regard for further proceedings. Justice Mayank Kumar Jain, who delivered the judgment today, had reserved his verdict in June after hearing the plea from the Shahi Idga Mosque Committee, questioning the maintainability of the suits. Pronouncing the verdict in open court, the court, while reading the operative part of the judgment, said that the suits of the Hindu worshippers and the deity are not barred under the Limitation Act or Places of Worship Act, etc. With this decision, all 18 suits have been found to be maintainable, paving the way for them to be heard on merits. To read about the contentions of both the parties in this case, you can visit livelaw.in. The Supreme Court has today issued notice on a plea filed by Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal's close aide Bibhav Kumar against Delhi High Court's denial of bail in the Swati Maliwal assault case. The order was passed by a bench of Justices Surya Kant, Dipankar Datta and Ujjal Bhuya upon hearing senior advocate Dr. Abhishek Manu Singhvi who appeared and argued for Bibhav. Singhvi said that Bibhav had been in custody for 75 days and the charge sheet had been filed. He contended that Maliwal registered the FIR after three days of the incident, but Bivav's FIR of the same day was not registered. Singhvi argued that Maliwal's injuries were minor and that she did not file an FIR despite going to the police station on the day of the incident. However, the bench questioned Singhvi, pointing out that Maliwal had called emergency services at 112, indicating the seriousness of the situation. The bench has issued notice on the plea and has asked that the charge sheet and MLC be placed on record. The Enforcement Directorate today withdrew from the Supreme Court its petition challenging the Punjab and Haryana High Court's order, which quashed the arrest of former Yamuna Nagar MLA Dilbag Singh in a money laundering case. As per the allegations, the petitioners here, along with their family members, were illegally detained by ED from 4th to 8th January this year when the search and seizure at their houses took place. The High Court, after perusing the record, had said that the authorities had illegally confined and unlawfully restrained them. It further said that nothing stops the persons whose premises are being searched from carrying out their daily routine. Thus, the High Court held that ED does not have the right to restrain the movements of the petitioners in the present case within their premises. The bench of Justices Surya Khan, Sanjay Kumar and Ujjal Bhuya was today hearing ED's plea challenging this High Court order. But at the outset, ASG SV Raju appraised the bench that the ED does not want to press this petition. He, however, requested the court to keep the question of law open. After the court dismissed the present SLP, as withdrawn, it agreed to keep the question of law open. A PMLA court in Kolkata has dismissed the Enforcement Directorate's complaint against a senior advocate Nalini Chitambram in the Shraddha Chit Fund scam case. Judge Prashanta Mukhopadhyay found no prima facie case of money laundering against her. The Enforcement Directorate alleged that Chitambram received 1.349 crore from Sudipta Sen's companies between June 2010 and June 2012 without issuing bills or invoices. Chitambram's representative, advocate Arun Natrajan, stated that there was no formal agreement with Sen and her payments were related to her work for Mrs. Manoranjana Sen's TV business paid by Shraddha Reality India Limited. The prosecution argued that Chitambram lacked supporting documents and payment acknowledgements. Additionally, Shraddha Group's advocate Naresh Balodia claimed that Chitambram attended SEBI-related meetings with Sen with her expenses covered by the Shraddha Group. The court has now ruled that the issue of missing tax invoices should be handled by other authorities and not the Enforcement Directorate. It concluded that Chitambram's professional fees and expenses were not proceeds of crime. The judge noted that it is common for clients to cover travel and accommodation expenses for lawyers. Therefore, no prima facie case of money laundering was established and the complaint was dismissed. The Delhi High Court has observed that Unique Identification Authority of India in a habeas corpus petition involving exceptional circumstances can be directed to provide the Aadhaar data about a missing person even without being afforded a prior hearing. 
The bench headed by Justice Pratibha M. Singh was dealing with a habeas corpus plea filed by a daughter seeking production of her mother who was missing since May 2019. It was the daughter's case that despite best efforts of the Delhi police, her mother could not be traced and that the Aadhaar card of her mother had been updated recently. In its report filed in a sealed cover, the UIDAI informed the court that the address details of the mother had been changed. This was as per the contact and other details with the authority. The bench observed that under normal circumstances, the data given by any individual for preparing an Aadhaar card would be personal data and would be governed by the law of privacy. However, it added that sometimes there are exceptions to the position like the present case where the daughter was seeking a writ of habeas corpus for production of her mother. The court then said that the updated address and mobile number etc. as per the latest Aadhaar card data of the mother of the petitioner has been provided to the Delhi police who shall now carry out the investigation and file an updated status report with regard to the whereabouts of the mother of the petitioner. In another update, a Delhi court today denied anticipatory bail to former probationer IAS officer Pooja Khedkar accused of misrepresenting and falsifying facts in her application for UPSC Civil Services Examinations 2022. UPSC yesterday cancelled her candidature and debarred her permanently from all the future examinations and selections of the commission. As per UPSC, she was found guilty of acting in contravention of the provisions of Civil Services Examination 2022 rules. Additional Sessions Judge Devinder Kumar Jangla of Patiala House Courts observed that Khedkar had pre-planned the conspiracy which was going on for last many years and thus her custodial interrogation was required to unearth the truth. He said that Khedkar was able to breach the wall of UPSC not only once but repeatedly with deceitful means and that she not only cheated and defrauded the commission but the lawful rights of eligible aspirants. The court has directed the investigating agency to widen the scope of investigation and directed it to conduct its probe in all fairness. The probe agency has also been directed to find out the candidates recommended in the past who have availed the benefits beyond permissible limits and those who obtained benefits under OBC category without being entitled of the same. You must have heard about the recent tragedy in Vainad in Kerala. On Tuesday, extremely heavy rainfall in the district triggered landslides in the hilly areas, especially in the villages of Mundakai and Chur Mala. It is estimated that at least 293 people are dead and 200 are injured. 240 people are missing as per the reports. The rescue mission led by the army has reportedly saved over 1,000 people. The Kerala High Court will hold a reference tomorrow morning to condole the large-scale loss of lives and to express solidarity with the survivors who lost their homes and family members. The reference will be held in the court of the Chief Justice. If you wish to know more details about the cases that I mentioned here, you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us. You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.